All right, Monday edition of PFT Live rolls around. And what we've done in the past on Mondays, it's the Sunday surprise. We've tried to go with something different today. We are going with something different. We're trying to. We are, Chris. Defining moments of Week 17. That is our draft for today. And I have a question. Well, I just occurred to, to me. Did you wear that thing. shirt on the show last night? Did you? No, uh, okay. I didn't. Stop okay. it. I, I did to make sure. All right. All right, good. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, you, you keep trying that. No, I've learned. I learned the hard way okay, good. Uh, not to try to pull that off. Derrick Henry won his second straight rushing title. Who was the last player to lead the league in rushing in back-to-back seasons? Mm. Wow. Okay. Um, I, I mean, man, you want to say I, I'm not – it is not an answer. I mean, I want to – my mind goes right to Adrian Peterson and – I think of, answer? Uh, no, but it's not, or CJ2K, but I would think it's, I'm going to go LaDainian Tomlinson. Oh, did yeah. you look at the, did you cheat? Did no, you cheat? I don't cheat ever. Never. All right. Um, sure. This okay. just, this just in, I'm a historian. Like I've told you a million times. <laughs> all right, go ahead. <laughs> you right. got the first pick. Uh, go ahead. In all honesty, I saw the stat somewhere the last week or so on TV somewhere where they talked about back-to-back rushing leaders, and that's where I got it from. Um, and this mind is like a steel trap. It just once you get it in there, it's there. Okay, defining moment for me. I'm going to go to the Los Angeles Rams or Arizona Cardinals football game. Seven five, Strevler in at quarterback. Cardinals driving down before the half. They're in fringe field goal territory. Strevler throws a ball down the seam, and oh wait, there's no receiver there. And Troy Hill picks it off and returns it for a 84-yard pick six. That, to me, one of the defining moments of Sunday where it was a defensive battle with two quarterbacks. To that point, Wolford was the only one who had done something dumb with his first pick of the day on his first throw of the day. And then that was, hey, we got a young quarterback who's inexperienced too. Look what he can do. Oh, he'll give you a free seven points. That changed the game, and really the Rams never relinquished the power of the momentum from the game from there on out. I got to go back to what we spent the first half hour of the show talking about because I think the defining moment of the day and the moment that will resonate into today and possibly beyond is the benching of Jalen Hurts that that is the moment that Washington clinched the NFC East and the Giants were able to get salty about what the Eagles were trying to pull and whatever the reason, whatever the layers, whatever the levels, that's the moment. When I think back to the 17th Sunday of the 2020 season, the one thing that's going to stand out is the decision of the Eagles to pull Jalen Hurts out of a close game and concede to Washington and take the higher pick at number six in round one versus number nine. That that's the one thing I'll never be able to forget. Man, I know that's it's uh, it's a killer still. I, I really couldn't even believe. And you see Fletcher Cox. That's pretty good. The uh, little back and forth there with <laughs> Eli. Eli Manning. I love it. Um, but I, I will say, like watching it, it was as jarring as uh, you know ever. Is it just being like, oh my gosh, they're intentionally trying to lose. It's the first time ever that I really felt that way watching an NFL football game. You know, and again, like I wasn't watching that 2014 Bucks game last game of the year. So it just, it was jarring, I guess, because it was Sunday night football and the implications, but uh, something else. It's one of those things I think I'll never forget just how you kind of felt at that moment. Um, All right. My next one, uh, I'm going to go to the Seattle game. We haven't talked about them yet, but you talk about a Sunday defining moment. Well, it doesn't have to do with Russell Wilson. It has to do with the defense and Benson Maioa getting the strip sack fumble on C.J. Beather late in the football game. Seahawks finally go up in the football game. They had been struggling. Now they're up 19-16 to after a long drive and a great throw, touchdown pass by Russell Wilson. They get the strip sack, and then a few plays later score a touchdown to go up by 10 points to where, to me, that was ball game. Seattle, who had struggled all day long, and... Mike, I mean, it's crazy with Seattle. It was all about their offense the first 10 weeks of the year, and now it's the offense is kind of struggling, and it's all about Russell making plays, and the defense is the most consistent thing they got going. The defense, other than the Rams, has been the best defense in football over the last five or six weeks. Phenomenal. I can't believe the transformation of the team altogether. And, you know, the Seahawks were playing in that window at the same time. The Saints were at Carolina, and the Packers were at Chicago, 
and there were different ways the dominoes could fall for any of the three teams to be the number one seed. And early on, it wasn't clear how it was going to work out, and there was just kind of a sense, are the Packers actually going to blow their shot to have home field advantage in the divisional round and if they win there, the, the championship round? And then, and then I'm surprised I'm taking this and not you. Then came the moment. Oh, Aaron Rodgers to Marquez Valdez-Scantling for 72 yards, the catch and run. That was the moment where it's like, okay, okay. The Bears, they, they, no, they, they, no, no. it's fun for a little while, right. but the Packers are going to win this game, and the Packers are going to nail down the one seed, and the road to the Super Bowl is going through Lambeau Field, which will have a huge influence on who gets there and raises considerably the chances it'll be the Packers representing the NFC, Chris. Yeah, can't can't, can't disagree with that. I mean, it, it's hard. I mean, Rodgers and Green Bay, up in Green Bay, in those elements, uh, they're they're just there's something about it. And of course, he just he it just doesn't matter. Just like you see in Chicago last night, it just doesn't matter how cold, how windy it is. It doesn't matter. The guy has hands like a caveman. Okay, I've shook his hands. His fingers are twelve inches long. And he can just grab the ball and rip it through the air any way he wants. He's just – he's one of the most gifted throwers we've ever seen, and that's why they're going to be tough to beat up in Green Bay. All right. Um, I haven't given my G-men any love. I got to give my G-men some love. Joe Judge, Daniel Jones, Giants, way to fight. Wait. Is is the defining moment when the guy recovered the fumble with his butt? Well, hey, it might be. I mean, yes, I, that was <laughs> that was a defining moment. It was kind of like the Giants. You're in a nutshell right there. I was going to go to the what happened just before that though, and Andy Dalton throwing the interception in the end zone on third down, where yeah, they were going down trying to take a lead in the football game. The Giants defense, as it did for the most part of the day came through in a big situation, got pressure on Dalton, forced him to throw an interception. Xavier McKinney intercepts it. But the Giants, just a lot of credit for them for perseverance all year. Yesterday, they really controlled that football game through and through. I mean, Daniel Jones and Wayne Gallman, they had the uh, the drop handoff early in the game that gave the Cowboys a short field. Evan Ingram had a ball that went right through his two hands that gave the Cowboys another drive for a touchdown. But either way, give them a lot of credit for fighting in a big game and, and beating the Cowboys. I think the defining moment of this draft is your failure to take any moment that was truly a defining moment for Sunday. But that's okay. It's your prerogative. I'm not, I'm not being critical. Well, why, why was the Rams pick six not a defining moment? I don't understand. Why was the strip Because sack? nobody's going to – nobody cares. Because nobody cares. Who's gonna, how's that going to be remembered? How's that going to resonate? What does that define? It defines a meaningless game. That's why. That's why. Well, it, I'm it, sorry. I was put up to that. Well, I mean, it defines what. The, okay, I, I don't know if it was meaningless. I mean, it wasn't maybe meaningless at the def- time. Maybe, maybe we need. Maybe the guy that gave you that idea moment. to say that should come up with a better draft and do his job the next time. <laughs> maybe that's what he should do. All right, <laughs> the last one for me, and, and I let it just hang there. And I, I was going. I thought by now I'd be down to Isaiah McKenzie's 84-yard touchdown on a punt return. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. He stops, he starts, he zigs, he zags, and that was the moment that that game was over. But I'm going to go with the Cleveland Browns. Third and one. It's 24-22. They need one play. And with the Browns, you never quite know that you can count on them to make one play. They did student body right with Baker Mayfield. He slides for the first down. He gets up with the emphatic first down indication. And that was the moment that 18 years of pent-up frustration in Cleveland finally had come to fruition. Even though there were only 11,870 fans there, they got to enjoy it. And the Browns fans everywhere got to enjoy it. And they have suffered. And they deserved so much better than what they've gotten. So, uh, yeah, I left it there for you through through two rounds. And you didn't take it, Chris. Yeah, okay, great. Whoop-de-doo. I liked mine better. Okay, great. Uh, But either way. And then the Browns, their onside kick recovery, right? I mean, that was scary in itself. They kind of had a Giants type fumble recovery where their guy like recovered it with his butt. And it was so you were like, oh, my gosh, is the Steelers going to recover this? And you're just thinking, is Cleveland totally jinxed? But uh, good thing they got it. And uh, I resent you attacking my defining moments. I really do. Uh, that's fine. Uh, but and, and, and look, it, it we, we really do need to, you know, if you're a fan of any other team but the Browns, and, and and I guess there are others that have had extended stretches, but for the most part, you know, people lock on to teams that are 
are successful, that aren't dysfunctional, that get to the playoffs every other year, every year, three out of four, five out of six, whatever it may be, to go 18 years without playing a single playoff game. Think about that. It's a generation. Yeah. And I feel bad for the Browns because they have to go back to Pittsburgh. That's where they played a playoff game. Yeah. The last time they were in. In 2002. The only playoff game of the resurrected Browns. The team that that moved to Baltimore in 1995 became the Ravens and then got back into the NFL in 1999. 96 is when they moved for the 96 season, but they got back in 1999. One playoff berth before this year. It, it, I wish they didn't have to play the Steelers. Um, but but you know what? If they go and they beat the Steelers, that'll make that a defining moment of be. wild card weekend. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, it, 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 I, I'm with you. It's a little bit like, oh, I wish they weren't going to play each other, but – it is going to be intense. It always is extra intense when you had to play the team the week before. It's going to be personal. And yeah, Cleveland, if they could win this one, it'll be it'll mean more than the extra wild card win. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.